Hi guys, Laura here. Welcome to another video. Glad to have you here. Today I'm gonna show you a couple of different things. We're gonna go through different um, monuments and memorials, look at their beauty and mystery and of course as always at the official story. Um, we're gonna take a look at some architecture and um, yeah it's gonna be an interesting ride. I'm gonna pack this video full of different exciting things, strange things, beautiful things and um, I hope you enjoy. And we're gonna start with this picture. So in my last video about the Oera Linda book I've had a um, slideshow going and I found this picture on um, Pinterest. I thought, I don't know, it just kind of went with a theme of uh, old Celtic, Norse, Slavic um, culture. And the funny thing is, a couple of days ago I found a monument um, a memorial or an artwork, how you want to call it, um, however you want to call it, that looks exactly like this. And this is it. Viking Swords of Ed Stavanger Swords Monument. So let's have a look at the official history. Sverti Fjell Swords Swords in Rock is a commemorative monument located at the Havsfjord neighborhood of Madla, um, which lies in the southwestern part of the large municipality of Stavanger in Norway. The monument was created by sculptor Fritz Rud from Brian and was unveiled by King Olaf of Norway in 1983. So this is a quite a recent installation. Quite a recent monument. The three bronze swords stand 10 meters or 33 feet tall. 33, here comes again the number that they love. Tall and are planted into the rock of a small hill next to the fjord. Um, they are in memory of a battle that took place in 872 and the monument also represents peace since the swords are planted into solid rock so they may never be moved. And what's funny about that is, is I could not find any documentation about how this monument, I mean look at that, was revealed. I couldn't find any videos, any um, articles about it, especially, I mean, the king was there and it's a very interesting monument planted into the rock. Huge, huge um, bronze swords and um, I found nothing. The only thing I found were private videos and um, private photographs. So about this ceremony, I couldn't find anything. And I found that very strange because 1983 and, I mean, like, the king was there and stuff. So, I don't know, it just really, I thought it was really strange that you couldn't find anything about it um, that showed when it was revealed or how it was installed or how it was made. I mean, of course, okay, maybe not the construction thing, but that would be also very interesting. I mean, that's um, really a logistic, logistical um, uh, how is it called in English? I mean, it's not easy to do, that's what I wanted to say. And yeah, 1983, and I found nothing about it. I looked, searched for it in um, even in Norwegian, but I couldn't find anything. So I found that very, very strange. And if I could have a guess, I don't think that these 
are that this is a, uh, a memorial. I don't know what it is, but it's extremely weird that you cannot find, or that I couldn't find, I uh, couldn't find anything um, that showed the ceremony or anything related to it. It just always it is there, and also when we um, look at the place where it is, so here it is. It is Norway. And when we look, it is at a very strange place. Also, of course, they say this is the place of the battle, but as you see, there is quite some land on the water, I would say. And it is just placed just right here. And what kind of a battle can it be if it's right, right at the the water. Um, it could be that there was this battle and um, that it was there, but what I found interesting is that here you see that there is more land. I mean, it's in it's in digital art, as I can from what I can tell. Yeah, um, but yeah that I found really really interesting and I don't know guys, if you maybe have something if you find something, let me know, or let me know your thoughts on anything that I present in this video and in other videos. I'm always interested. Um, I'm not um, saying you how it is. I just found this really, really interesting. And also this, and I didn't know about that. Um, I grew up in Germany, and I... We had um, the Second World War, World War um, for two years and we learned about all the horrors but not much about the story around it. We didn't learn about the um, Nazis being extremely interested in paranormal stuff, in, um, in extraterrestrials, in ancient um, artifacts and stuff like that. They went into Crimea and looked there. Basically, they looked everywhere for ancient artifacts, and I'm gonna, of course, put uh, this article in the description box below so you can go, but, um, yeah. So we find this reoccurring theme of his utopia, and I don't even think that it was only him. I think he was in some sort of a brotherhood, and um, they perverted this type of um, knowledge that I showed you in my last video about the Oyara Linda book and um, yeah there are always crazy people around taking stuff that is actually there to I don't know help humanity or guide humanity and they start killing people yeah and then I went and I found this monument <laughs> of which I also never heard about. Um, I would love to visit this. And this is the Völkerschlachtdenkmal in um, Leipzig. And so the first stone was laid in 1900 and it was finished um, in 1912. Um, it is a huge amount of granite and cement that was placed there. And as you can see, um, it looks like a pyramid. I'm going to read you the description. And here we have a power station or a castle. They did a huge amount of groundwork. And um, <laughs> when, I, when I look at this, I'm quite sure that the, underneath there is also stuff. So this is how it looked. Um, let me read you a little bit about how it was done. So it is a monument in the memory of the Battle of Leipzig in 1813, also known as Battle of the Nations, paid for mostly by donations and the city of Leipzig. Yeah. I found that also very interesting. It was completed in 1913 for the 100th anniversary of the battle at a cost of 6 million gold marks. So, um, 
yeah, it's about the defeat of Napoleon's French army at Leipzig and different peoples were fighting it as Germany wasn't the Germany we know of today. Actually, most of the countries and government things that we have today were just um, basically manifested in the past hundred years. Um, before that, it was much more complicated. But anyhow, so the structure is 91 meters or 299 feet tall. It contains over 500 steps to a viewing platform at the top, from which there are views across the city and environs. The structure makes extensive use of concrete and the facings are of granite. So I'm guessing when you look at this construction picture, this is one year before they finished it, what I'm guessing is that they, again, that they found this monument and they used maybe concrete for the inside, but the outside, I mean, um, yeah, it's almost completed and it already looks very old, just as it looks um, today. Uh, my boyfriend was saying, yeah, well, maybe it's dirt, you know, but... Um, yeah, this thing, I mean, it's beautiful, it's not the typical, um, it's very Germanic, I would say, it's very, um, and this also what they say was intended to actually honor the people and not the royals, it's beautifully made, but I think, again, I think this is newer, um, I think this is cement, but this is granite, and maybe they used cutting and actually put that later on. I don't know. What do you think, guys? This looks very old. And this is inside. So you have, um, you have the first floor down here where are the, mom the people are at this height. And then on the second floor you have these huge peoples. This is from the outside. And I mean, what? Look at the tiny, tiny people here. Why? Why the heck would you build like that? They also did create an artificial mound, which I don't think that they did. And also this huge pool, and they say they had a lot of different and other plants to to actually make it more um, bigger and yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, cam trail, beautiful. So yeah, this looks dirty or I would say it looks burned actually. Um, yeah, so these are the huge um, statues and you see here there much much more little and tinier and here they're very huge and I found the poses also very interesting I, yeah so I don't know what do you guys think um, does this look something that was built a hundred years ago with the power of donations by people I don't know it looks old very old. Yeah, but beautiful. I like that kind of style because it's very minimalistic and um, I don't know, not so <sighs> overthrown with all of these stuff that you find. Find in Bavaria, for example, when you look at the video that I did about um, Munich. So, design and concept. Um, Inspired by Van Brenner's early project, Schmitz constructed the monument over an artificial hill and selected a pyramidal shape for a clear view of the surroundings. Um, the base is 124 meters, the main structure at 91 meters, and it is one of the tallest monuments in Europe. Um, it is composed of two stories. 
on the first stories, story a crypt is adorned by eight large statues of fallen warriors, um, guardians of the death of the dead. And on the second story you have the Hall of Fame, which features four statues, each at nine nine point five meters tall, representing the four legendary historic qualities ascribed to the German people. Bravery, faith, sacrifice and fertility. Um, the statues of the monument were sculpted by Christian Behrens. Um, yeah. This is, was a German sculpture. And again, you find very little about these people. Um, the memorial is constructed, excuse me, the memorial is constructed in granite and sandstone. The cupola is decorated with, with primitive Germanic shames, shapes inspired by Egyptian and Assyrian sculpture. Also very weird, kind of. <laughs> um, Schmitz also planned to create an accompan accompanying, accompanying complex for ceremonies that would include a court, a stadium, and parade, parade grounds. Um, yeah, a very interesting site. Um, when I, when I'm going back to Germany, maybe for a visit, I'm for sure gonna um, take a look at that and just feel the energy there. So then we have this monument. Sorry guys, sorry guys, one second. We're gonna look at the Barbarossa monument. This is it. Also looks very, very old um, with this type of pretty new um, statues, I would say. So the Barbarossa monument is an Emperor William monument in the Kyffhäuser mountain range in the German state of Thuringia. So in the mountain range, yeah. It was erected from 1819 to 1896 atop the ruins of the medieval Kyffhäuser castle um, designed by Bruno Schmitz. And it's about, again about a battle the monument, has a, the monument has a total height of 81 meters and um, the monument sits among the ruins of medieval imperial castle of Kufhausen that built, that built beginning at 1000 CE reached its maximal extent during the reign blah 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 yeah so Let's take a look at that. So this is the top. As you can see, beautiful mason work. Again, we have these portal do windows or doors. And um, some snakes down here. Yeah. This looks actually like a pool, and this is it. Um, looks pretty damaged, um, looks pretty buried, and I would imagine that this actually could be some sort of a star fort. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Does the official story make sense? Or do you think they just kind of repurposed it? I gave it a new identity, so to speak. It looks very, very old. monument in 1900 and as you can see I mean um what <laughs> how 
how this destruction came about. Do you think that they build it just like... Whoops. Sorry, guys. Um, right? Right next to this huge stone blocks? Is this some kind of destruction? Um, I don't know. Looks like it. Looks like that just they just found it. They didn't make it, they found it. Uh, I'm sorry guys, I'm today we got a storm. I'm on a, I'm a little bit Yeah, I mean look at this. <laughs> Seriously? Um, I mean, it looks beautiful, and it's kind of an you know interesting thing to um, incorporate those stones. But again, when you look at that, 1900, it looks way older and older, and it looks like there has been a lot of destruction going on before. And what kind of weapon could actually make this kind of destruction. Who knows? And maybe this actually goes further into the ground and this is a wall that surrounds it, not a platform. This looks very Star 40. Very Star 40. Yeah, let's go to the next one. We have the Port of Svalica. And again, um, it emerged <laughs> between 1892 and 1898 against the background of a rising German national identity. What? 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 It emerged. Why then don't they say they just build it? Um, <sighs> yeah. This is how it looks. Again, this very, very beautiful brickwork on top. And this kind of petroglyphic things added into it. Maybe they repaired it, you know? This looks very um, straight line. And here you have these um, non-geometrical forms. And here again also. Maybe they just, I don't know, repaired it. Yeah, here we got the duty, the dude again. Of course, royals. This is it in 1990, uh, 1909. Um, again, <laughs> it looks very old from the beginning. I think they've, they, they've found it. Look at the tiny people. They also built this, must have been big, bigger people, you know? And um, yeah, you have this sort of a base, and this looks pretty new. The rocks are not as wasted, the stones are not as wasted. And yeah, interesting thing, don't you think? Uh, antenna back here. And then we look at our modern day antennas and we look at the old um, metal sort of like antennas on top of Victorian style buildings. They look pretty much the same, just prettier basically. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's again, um, it's on a mountain. Um, very, very strange, but also very interesting and beautiful. Here we can have a look closer, closer look. And these stones like look like they are, they look very similar to the medieval buildings that we have in Germany also. 
I don't think that the statue was here <laughs> um, initially. I think this was some sort of device and we see that with so much buildings and cathedrals and um, monuments and um, they look all very similar in their style and um, I think this was some sort of device what do you think guys and I also think that that you had in the middle you had some sort of a metal maybe or some sort of a crystal rock and then you would have metal going down into some water basins and you would have I don't know, maybe a programming tool, maybe a tool that could extract um, atmospheric energy. I don't know. I think they have much more purpose than just, you know, a monument, a memorial. Um, yeah. And I guess and I bet that there are much more things like that around in Germany and especially in the mountain areas yeah so let's go on let's have a look at some creepy architecture shall we and um, when you look at this guy um yeah he looks he had and I mean of course if you would just have him, him, maybe just a quirky guy with cool glasses and, you know, a geek, as some people would say. Um, but when you look at what kind of architecture he designed, um, it is creepy as fuck. Um, he designed buildings and Germany and in Poland that were extremely cold, um, otherworldly. And you have to keep in mind that this type of architecture was designed at the same time as Art Nouveau um, was around. So I honestly think that um, that there are different realities that we are inhabiting in in this realm um, because people have such different ways of expressing themselves in art if they designed and built that um, and it was at the same time in the same time period so I found it very interesting and um, most of these buildings are actually factories for gases and other chemicals and that were also used in the Second World War. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how they look. That's the type of feeling you get from them. And he designed different um, public buildings also in Berlin like um, theater, but mainly he designed, um, if he designed that, which I don't know about that, because um, when we look, these buildings are, of course, mud flooded. See that? I mean, guys, that's the point. You cannot argue with people, and it's really hard to um, explain these things because you need to do a certain amount of research and invest time and energy in that because you need to look at a lot of different um, things and a lot of different findings and ideas that people have and just look at the photographic evidence or in this case, it is um, a, a sketch, um, to see reoccurring patterns, like the windows going into the ground. I, I never realized that, um, but the more I invested time in educating myself, 
and getting a, a grip on that, um, you see the repeating patterns. I mean, just, just an, as an example, let's say you have a therapist, a psychotherapist, all right? Without studying the subject and reading cases and cases and then practicing, um, you wouldn't be a good psychiatrist or a good therapist because you wouldn't um, recognize patterns, reoccurring patterns. And um, that's why I don't like try to, to tell people about this, um, like in my personal life, um, because it takes a huge amount of study to see those reoccurring um, patterns. And then you have to look into all of these different um, theories of people. And we all just try to figure it out and find out that this realm that we live in it's not at all what we have been told, but much more, it is much weirder than any sci-fi or fantasy book that I have ever read. And you see it again here. Um, yeah, it's buried in the ground. <laughs> I mean, you cannot deny this fact. Um, and they all look very creepy, and I think that in, in the old world they were also some kind of factories, um, but yeah, they have this so sort of um, feeling to them. And there's even an article, it's in German, but it's about um, if a building can be evil. And um, of course they're denying that, they say that um, the use of it makes it evil. But you can design and build, I don't know, um, something like that, that in is inspiring and actually uplifting the human spirit. This actually reminds me a lot of um, elven, elvish architecture that you see in Lord of the Rings. Um, or you can, I don't know, design stuff like this. I've always have been interested in architecture and the way it makes me feel. It actually programs um, a certain type of reality. And that's why I don't like how we build today. It's just, um, it's horrible. It's boring, it's cold, and um, I don't like it at all. I like the old world stuff. Stuff like this. I am in love with Art Nouveau. And here again we have those spires, red brick, and this beautiful ironwork. It's, it's, it just makes you feel good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you at the end of the video all of these different pictures just to <laughs> show what I like, but before I go into that, I found um, a website where they sell old um, religious books, Russian books, and I found it interesting because um, we have big people again, and I ha think we had big, big, big people of all kinds of um, sorts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I found this uh, pretty interesting that, I mean, he's huge in comparison to him. And he's the one who writes the stories. You know, you know, and as you can see, it's about, um, I think it's about Jesus. But yeah, it's um, Imperial Russia, 1644. And we see these types of different um, people um, in these times in these old books from from around 1500s 1600s um, and they're very really interesting so I found this kind of nice to show you and then I found oh sorry this guy Jean-Jacques Lecoeur and he was a visionary from 1757 to 1825 and he made some really interesting drawings. Um, 
Yeah. There's more, a temple of divination. And he did very um, fantastical, as they say, um, designs. And I found just this, um, this phrase here really funny. Um, but these aren't the works of reality. Not one we are aware of, anyway. What? Um, so they, the, the, the author, author of this article basically says, Well, I'm not aware of it. Uh, we are not aware of that. So it didn't exist. Huh? Um, yeah. Yeah. Found this really interesting, and um, here's another article. So, when you look at this picture, yeah, what's what does it say? Freemasonry was a prominent cultural movement in the France of the Coast Day. While he seems to have been part of the Brotherhood and knew the secret secretive Masonic initiation rites, it's not known to which lodge he belonged. This structure, located behind a temple devoted to Minerva, Minerva, is designed for initiations into the society of sages and most courageous men. According to Lucas and annotations, the ritual to join the Brotherhood required initiates to overcome the, their fear of death through trials by fire, water and air in subterranean chambers before emerging into the light. Um, each chamber would be equipped with complex mechanisms meant to produce collapse of thunder. Underground of a gothic house from civil architecture. So yeah, guys, um, go and take a look into his work. Um, this is the name of this picture. And when I put it in, we got that thing. I found that pretty interesting. Um, yeah, design, oh, I'm sorry, where was it, where was it, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stuff he did, here it is, design for Temple of the Earth, Interesting, right? Yeah, so let's go through some architecture I found and um, I'm not gonna present you the official narratives, I just wanted to show you the different types of stuff that we have. And this is Russian architecture. And uh, we have interesting Antiqua tech on top with an antenna again going up. Beautiful. This I found very interesting. This is Art Deco. This reminds me actually of the Incas, um, yeah, of uh, South America. This is in Rome, old Rome. It looks also very um, futuristic. Um, this is from the monument in Leipzig that I showed you at the beginning. Art Nouveau. Beautiful brickwork. These are um, Slavic mythical creatures. Just stunning work. This I found very scary. <laughs> And very brutal and not not very well, well made. It's yeah, weird thing. This is again in Germany, from what I know. Again, giants holding the globe or some sort of globe. And what I found interesting about these stoneworks and um, Campbell from Autodidactic was also talking about it and some people on other channels are talking about this, is how that kind of intricate stonework could be originally made out of wood. 
these things I see even today they are made out of wood um, to hold um, the roof the panels of the roof and maybe they had some sort of a e either technology either because of water and minerals coming in that this was fossilized um, wood either that or and or um, they had technology Russian architecture which reminds us a lot of Indian architecture and I don't know this also reminds me a lot of 3d printing um, yeah here we have a little bit of I think this is in America I think it is New York I'm not sure it could be San Francisco or something like that also around the 1900s and that's what's so frustrating for me about the current times is that we have completely lost any aesthetics any kind of interesting aesthetics and most of it has been destroyed and what has not been destroyed is either in the hands of uh, wealthy people not newly wealthy people, but old wealth, or governments and institutions. So yeah, this is the kind of Russian style. Some excavations. Yeah, and these kinds of buildings that supposedly were not built. Um, but who knows? Maybe all of this is buried underground or up onto this floor maybe and we only see the top of all of these beautiful old old skyscraper cities here we say some see something in comparison <laughs> this i found also very interesting um, also pretty old brickwork Russia this is again in Rome and I mean look at that in comparison to what is here interesting so interesting so this is from the 1889 Paris exhibition <laughs> looks again Victorian, Russian, Tatarian, whatever you want to call it, steampunk, old world. Let's just call it old world beauty. This is a Russian dacha from 1910 and dachas are houses in the countryside. Again, I think this is actually now a church of some type but again what is the difference between Slavic and Nordic or Celtic or Scandinavian artwork I see very little difference the only difference that I see is that in the Russian Tatar and Slavic realm it is a little bit more um, let's say lighter in the energy a little bit more decorative less it's a little bit more playful um, when I look at Norse architecture in style it's extremely similar but it's a little bit more serious because I mean the climate is also more serious there this I found also very very interesting I don't exactly know where this is but it could be India Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I mean, these are of course um, artist renderings, but could be, could be. I love round windows. These are actually, this type of building is my dream house. And when I buy my house in the countryside, I'm gonna try to do stuff like this. Again, antiquitag on top of a wooden house. 
and we get this, and this is stone. Um, either extremely grand mason work, or petrified wood, or what would you say, guys? And all of these abundant places, all of these abundant mansions, a lot of them got destroyed. A lot of them... That's the thunderstorm, if you can hear it. <laughs> yeah. Um, just beautiful. And people are going into the cities. This is also from an exhibition. And this looks exactly... Come on. Like this. Just in a miniature and an exhibition. Did they 3D print it that? Who knows? Just beautiful. It just makes you feel good. It makes you feel special and connected and Yeah, worthy. I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is what I could do all day. Just look at Art Nouveau on Pinterest. This I found also pretty interesting. Um, these are sculptures in the... And this is in Buenos Aires in Argentina. And this is the entrance to cemetery. Giants, giants everywhere. And look at that, isn't that cool? They're missing their antennas. <laughs> yeah. What's here? What's there? Could be a temple in Egypt, but no. It supposedly is um, Chicago, 1922. Um, I don't think they built this, but could be. Maybe it's destroyed. And this is in Turkey. This is New York, Citibank, Farmers, Farmers Trust Building, 1931. Interesting helmets. Russia again. I mean... Don't you think if they could build stuff like that, that they couldn't do other um, technologies? Atmospheric technology, um, extracting ether, uh, electricity, and stuff like that through geometry, um, different types of materials, metal, water. It looks like that, yeah. Um, Russia again. I think this is... Um, Tomsk. This is also a memorial. I think it, it's the it's the Denver. It's it's in Denver. I think. Yeah, I found those also pretty weird. Paris, nineteen hundred, exposition, and here we have all of these Greco-Roman, Phoenician, mer, mermaid style. Um. Which is actually overwhelming. To me, this types of stuff, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it's overwhelming. I prefer Art Nouveau. It's much more um, integrated with nature, although it's also opulent and beautiful, but it's um, not... I mean, this looks just... It just looks trippy. Trippy, trippy. This looks much more, I don't know, well-rounded. Well <laughs> Yeah. This is the Hospin Bazaar. Also beautiful. Hoover Dam. It's Hoover Dam Angels. Weird angels sitting on squares. Yeah, if that isn't symbology, I don't know. Um, this is the Hope Memorial, Memorial Bridge in Ohio. Again, um, Giants. 
This is a kindergarten in Russia before the revolution. I don't know if communism was so good, honestly. The places in Russia looked much, much, much more beautiful um, <laughs> when you compare it to what they built in Soviet times. It's just... It's like trauma in form of architecture. And this I found also pretty cool. This reminds me a lot of that. <laughs> and there's this theory that we are actually in a crater on a much bigger plane. I don't know if on a planet, um, but it could be that these types of... It just reminded me of that crater that manifests a sphere and here we have the Tower of Babel going up. I don't know, I just found this building very weird and very symbolic. Um, this is not a coincidence, <laughs> guys. This is in Paris. Le Space is the Abraxas. And yeah. Dope, huh? Old Moscow. Moscow, 1896. And this looks exactly like the buildings you have in the expositions in Europe and America. These plus the opulent um, Phoenician style, which I just showed you, with the shells and the gods and stuff. Um, Russians don't do that, or Tatarians didn't do that. They had nature. They loved and appreciated nature and saw it as the purest expression of the creator, of source, of um, God, if you want to call him like that. It's much more appreciative and integrated with nature than with, um, I don't know, all these types of gods and naked people and naked little boys and stuff like that. This also was a building that was supposedly never built. But it's interesting that they had, you know, traffic going on. I mean, why would you um, sketch it like that um, with, I mean, look, this is, like, these are five, six stories, and these are huge buildings. Look at the little, little people. Um, maybe this was built. Maybe this was there at one point. And it looks a little bit like it's going into the ground. It's not, I don't know, it looks a little bit um, sunken on the right side. And we have industry going on. So if that is a plan, if that is a proposal to build something, um, why is it drawn like um, from just a normal everyday scene? Also never build. I don't know. This looks more like a photograph that was then printed than it looks like a sketch for building. It <laughs> this too. New York never built. It looks like a photograph that then was printed. And why would you put all of this traffic inside there? I don't think that this was never built. Not from from what I feel when I look at um, the scenery. Yeah. Oh, and this is from Sudan. I just found that also very cute and interesting. This is in Samba. This is Sudan. Tomsk, Tomsk. Tomsk, Waldorf Astoria, 1938, this looks flooded, and why, I mean,
Why is it so absurd that this wasn't there? When you had stuff like that, that looks buried. Hmm? I don't think that's absurd. World Fair again. Again. Tatarian style. Nordic style. Yeah. That's it, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and looking at some interesting stuff. Um, I know this video was a little bit all over the place, but I just had all these kinds of um, little stories for you and um, I'm gonna link all the stuff down below in the description box and I wish you a beautiful day. Hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.